Hi, I'm Jim Fisher, filling in for Lanita Cook, and thanks for joining us on The Artist Tree. Kansas City may be known for its friendly hospitality, jazz and blues, laid-back paced lifestyle, and of course, the best barbecue. But another feather we can add to the cap of our great Midwestern city is filmmaking. The Independent Film Coalition of Kansas City was established in 1993 to promote creative and artistic expression through film, video, and media production. Matt Connolly, president of IFC, and Vicki Rocco, vice president, are here today to talk to us a little about IFC KC. I'd like to welcome Matt and Vicki to the show. So why don't we start right at the beginning. Matt, when did you become interested in film? Well, uh, I became interested in film several years ago because I dated someone who worked on the film Pirates of the Caribbean. And um, so we lived together. She would come home and tell me about what was going on on set, and it really piqued my interest. I have actually heard of that movie. That's, uh, that's one of the big ones. So, uh, Vicki, when, when did, uh, what about you? Well, I've always had a love of film, and especially independent film. Um, but I would say about two years ago, a friend of mine who um, is a cameraman and has done a lot of work for Discovery Channel, History Channel, that type of thing, um, was producing his own documentary about another friend of ours and brought me in to help kind of with the marketing and that type of thing. And it got me really connected more so with the film community here in Kansas City, which until then I had no idea how big it was, um, how great um, our town is at embracing independent film. And so um, it, was, it was really easy for me to just kind of jump in and uh, really enjoy becoming a part of that community. So you say Kansas City's got a large, uh, good film community. Now, now, is part of that due to the coalition, do you think? Yeah, I would definitely say yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the purpose of the IFC is to introduce people to that world. Okay. Uh, the mission is to get people in who have an interest, don't really know much about the IFC, bring them in, educate them, and put them in contact with other people who, who know more about the film industry in Kansas City, and then get them involved in making films. Absolutely. So it sounds like the beginner is, is welcome at your meetings. Yeah, it's, it's largely geared for the beginner, and we also have a mixture of professionals then who are going to pass that knowledge along. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, how did you hear about the IFC uh, w when you first joined? What I'm, brought you there? Yeah, a, f a friend of mine, just word of mouth. and It wasn't your girlfriend who worked on the Pirates movie? No, it wasn't. It was somebody else. Okay. And he said, hey, you know, there's an uh, organization that's meeting. You know, they meet regularly. And they shoot uh, film. Maybe you'd be interested in coming down and sitting in, and so that's what I did. I came to several meetings and didn't, really didn't say a word for a lot of meetings, but just kind of absorbed and figured out what was going on. And you never looked back, it sounds like. Well, I actually, I actually did take a break for a while, okay. um, and then I, I got re-engaged and came back to the meeting, and I haven't stopped since. Very good. So. What, what about you, Vicki? Um, well, I... Uh, Actually, I think I, I was looking for resources online and found out about the IFC online um, and uh, emailed the president of the organization at the time, uh, which was prior to Matt's term, and uh, it just kind of went from there. I know that a lot of our membership um, you know, either will get to a meeting from one of those two ways, or they've just heard about it organically. Okay. You know, at some point um, in talking to people within the, the community, they've heard the name. Um, we also have a lot of schools that refer their students to us, or at least let the students know that we exist, and, and we're a great resource for students because it gives them the opportunity to interact with people who are already, in some instances, working full time in the industry, and if not, at least are producing shorts that they may be able to participate in and develop kind of those networking skills. You said you were looking for resources. What, what project were you working on that, that, that made you start looking to begin with? Mm -hmm. The documentary that um, okay. I had been pulled in to help on um, was about a gentleman who 
rode around the world on his motorcycle, left, uh, he's from the Netherlands, he left at the age of 40, sold everything. And it was something that was very interesting to me. Um, and I had a marketing background, but I had no idea how to use that in the film world. Um, and so really I was looking for kind of some of that producer knowledge wow. um, and to see, you know, what resources or what people suggested that I do. Um, you know, I had to find a theater that we were going to do the premiere at, um, you know, how to negotiate with the theater, what I should ask for. Those types of things were all things that I kind of had a sense for what I thought I should do, but nothing that was based on any sort of fact um, or anything to do with film. Well, when someone looking from the outside in, I wouldn't have even thought about the marketing aspects of marketing a film and, and getting it shown and getting people to come to that showing mm -hmm. and that part. I wouldn't even, so, so you've got those sorts of resources too, not just necessarily for the cutting and pasting of, of well, I guess that's not how they do it anymore, a film. Mm -hmm. You cover all aspects of it then? Yes, yeah, and we, we have to because a lot of people come to the organization or they'll, jump in and just make a film and then they think that's it. Right, sure. Um, but it's of course not. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of pre-production that goes into play and there's a lot of post-production and then what, when I've made this, um, where am I going to take it? Sure. Which is actually something they need to be thinking of before it's even made. Yep. Wow, that seems kind of counter counterintuitive yeah. to me. So, uh, so, so you're both filmmakers. Now, uh, how has the IFC impacted your filmmaking? As a, as a director or as a filmmaker or well, a film marketer? Yeah, well, I, I would not have been able to make a film without the IFC. There's no doubt about it. Wow. Um, because once I got there, I started to learn things. And, but more importantly, I was able to meet people who knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. and <clears throat> once I had a script, it was easy to find, well, here's someone who's got a camera. Mm -hmm. They know what they're doing with it. Uh, you know, here's someone who knows sound, um, so let's maybe they'll they'll help me out. So it was able, it, I was able to put those people together and then come up with my production. It wouldn't have happened otherwise. Sure, sure. Vicky, what about what about yourself? Yeah, pretty much the same. I would say that probably one of the most um, important aspects for me, and I think for a lot of our members, is you know the ability to. Um, tap into kind of some of those mentoring relationships. Um, you know, I have worked on productions um, that are IFC contests or festival type productions with other members, gotten to know them, um, you know, have, have started my list of those that I want to work with again and some that I may kind of avoid working with again. But I mean, those are the Which things that you, that is part yeah. of it. That's part of getting to know um, you know, and for me, I had no background in filmmaking at all. So I had no concept of going, oh, I want to direct a film someday. I'm the next Spielberg. Um, it was more along the lines of really kind of um, leveraging the skills that I already had. Once I got into it, it's fascinating. And, you know, now would I say what I said two years ago, which is I have no desire to direct? Well, you know what? Actually, it, it would be fun. Now, if I could find anybody to... Uh, um, you know, bring the crew together, that type of thing, then, you know, it's something I might look to in the future. But those, none of that would have happened without the IFC. And, you know, the reality is um, I, I probably would have guessed that I would have not gone to the meetings after my premiere, but I became so engaged in uh, the group. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of fun people. There's a lot of really um, knowledgeable people in the group, and it became something that I looked to as a resource for kind of those things that I like to do in my personal life, not necessarily the ones that I get paid for on a day-to-day -day basis. You said something about the, uh, the, the, the events you hold and, and that sort of thing, and I want to ask you a lot more about that right after this break. Thanks for joining us. We'll be right back.
need to cook with the artistry. I am here in Park City, Utah, home of Sundance Film Festival, where the devastatingly talented and dangerously beautiful converge in the spirit of independent film. Matt, my question for you is, what can Kansas City artists do to compete in an arena this huge? What do Kansas City filmmakers need to do? You know, the reality is the first thing you've got to do is make a good quality film. Um, and there are a lot of resources, um, both locally and nationally, to get your film um, submitted to film festivals. There is a website called Without a Box, um, and it contains information on not all, but a good majority of festivals and the ability to submit your film. Um, there are fees associated with submitting your film to a film festival. So it's really important, unless you have deep pockets and an unlimited budget, that you look at what each festival is really asking for in terms of film. Are they focused on documentaries? Are they focused on a certain ethnic group? Are they focused on shorts or, you know, comedies? Or, you know, really what is it? Um, spend a little time doing your research to find out what Definitely. that particular festival is looking for, um, you know, and the reality is uh, the big festivals, the ones like Sundance and Tribeca, um, you know, a lot of people want to submit to them and it would, be, you know, it's very prestigious to have a film screened there, but the reality is there are thousands and thousands and thousands of other people who feel exactly the same way. Um, so unless you really have a breakout film, the likelihood is that, um, you won't be selected. There are very, very few slots open um, and, and thousands, tens of thousands of films to choose from. Um, so the better route is to um, take what money you have, the budget you have, and really focus in on um, festivals that you think are going to be a good fit for your film. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I did, which ended up paying off for Shock the World, the one that I was involved in, was um, to look at festivals that are newer. A lot of times newer festivals um, either A, have less submissions because less filmmakers know about them, um, and they're looking maybe for a wider variety. They really haven't developed a niche, um, and so they're looking for a wider uh, variety of films. Um, you know, and just kind of go from there. You'll start, you'll get a lot of advice. Um, again, come to a, an IFC meeting yeah. and then you'll, uh, you'll have lots of people that are willing to help you figure out what to do with it after that. Sure. Yeah. These are the kind of things that we cover at IFC. Mm -hmm. I mean, we recently had a seminar. Our meetings are generally structured where we'll have business for the first 45 minutes or an hour, we'll take a break and then we'll have a seminar or screening. Mm -hmm. And we just had a seminar on submitting films to festivals. And now Matt so. knows I listened. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> Let's hope I not to sure. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> so if you don't want, if you haven't spent all your money already on the film you just made, you can submit it to hopefully get it submitted somewhere, and they'll definitely take your money, I assume. Well, but that's a good point. I mean, when you if you have a budget for a film, you need to factor into your budget in the pre-production part of it mm. costs that you're going to spend for submitting film to film festivals on the back end. Oh my. Mm -hmm. You know, well, again, it's that thing, you just don't make a film and then it's camp, you camp out on it. R right, you know, sure. You gotta well, do something. Yeah, and otherwise it becomes truly just a, a piece of self-made art. And unlike a painting that you might paint for yourself and hang on your wall in your house, a film doesn't get seen in, unless you play it, mm -hmm. play it, you know, and you are only gonna play it for yourself or your, your family, your mom, your dad, your wife, your husband, so many times before they're like, enough. It's like the, you know, the family vacation uh, photos over and over again. So really, from the standpoint of um, you know, planning, Matt's right. It's absolutely important to think ahead of time, what are, what's my end goal? Um, what do I want to do with this? You know, the other route that you can um, go, depending on the type of film you make, is to try to get a distribution deal. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if it's, if it's a longer, more of a feature length film in particular, mm -hmm. um, and you know, those are not easy to come by, but there are resources that, you know, are available for you and there are local filmmakers who have distribution deals. Um, you'll see feature length films, um, from filmmakers in town 
uh, that are being distributed through Walmart or Amazon or you know various locations. So it's possible, and there are people here who are resources um, that you can lean on. Again, if you come to an IFC right, meeting. Right. <laughs> Sounds like the first step is actually going. Yeah. All right, so I wanted to ask you about uh, some of the events that the Filmmakers Coalition has. Uh, one of them is called One Night Stand. Can, right. you, can you tell us a little bit about One Night Stand? Sure. Uh, one Night Stand is basically over the course of 10 hours. Um, in the morning we meet. You're, gonna, you're basically going to write, shoot, and cut, a, which are assemble a film in 10 hours. We meet in the morning, we draw a line of dialogue, a character, and a theme, and then teams go out and they shoot a film based around that. And there sh should be no pre-planning for this. So it's one of these crash course filmmaking deal, like, um, like the 48 hour film oh, festival wow. that they have nationwide. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to turn it in by a certain time period um, in order to become eligible for the judging. Oh Which, and it will screen it that night oh at a theater around town. Um, but you can turn it in late, but you're not going to be eligible for, for okay. the judging. Okay. And we'll give a first, second, third, and audience choice. So it's a great way to, for people to like, make a, learn how to make a film and quickly. <laughs> it sounds like so, there might be a, a little chaos on some of those sets. Yeah, it's very the day intense. Of the contest. It's very intense. And so, there's a significant percentage of people who start out in the morning but don't ever complete it. Really? Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Through one re one uh, reason or another, sure. computer crashing, rendering issues, whatever. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, the technology can really <laughs> um, cause problems. And you know, Matt alluded to the fact. I think it's kind of interesting to point out, uh, and and I've heard on more than one occasion, um, the IFC was the first to really develop this concept. Um, there are other organizations and national organization. Um, I'm actually the city producer for the 48-hour film project that is a competition that happens internationally. Um, but again, the IFC was the first to have the concept. We've been doing it for years and years and years. Um, and these other organizations um, made it bigger, certainly. Right. But, um, but we have a lot of people who have um, been involved in the IFC's version of it from the very beginning. Um, it's very well attended. Mm -hmm. Lots of people participate in this one. I'm sure it's a lot of fun. Uh, and, and now I imagine you both have participated in one of these. Uh, you, you've done a 10-hour film yourself. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's one of my favorite ways to make film, actually, because yeah. you can get it done sure. in a short amount of period, short period of time, and you, then you don't have to really have to worry about it afterwards. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's, mm -hmm. Well, when we come back, I, I do want to ask them about another event: uh, the Fantasy Filmmaker Draft. Great. All right, we'll be right back. Our fugitive has been on the run for 90 minutes. Average foot speed over uneven terrain, barring any injuries of four miles per hour. What I need from each and every one of you is a full target search of every gas station, residence, warehouse, farmhouse, hen house, outhouse, and dog house in that area. Your fugitive has just cashed in his 401k plan. And all he had to do was roll it over. Learn about rollovers and protecting your financial future. And choose to save. You can't mess with a big dog. We are just coming off of Dr. Martin Luther King's holiday, and in the spirit of equality, I'd like to know your opinion on black representation in the film industry as well as Hollywood. Good question. I'm not sure there's a need, but there is definitely more opportunity today um, for black filmmakers or any filmmaker. Um, I would say that one of the things that's had transpired over the past few years is technology has become more affordable. Mm -hmm. um, now, you can if you go on YouTube, you can see where that has happened, where people make more films. A lot of them aren't worth watching, <laughs> okay. but it's become kind of an equalizer. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really think it matters what race you are um, or what your background is. Today is an awesome opportunity to make your own film. 
Again, you have to remember the basics. Put a good script together, find some decent acting, um, find someone who knows a little bit about editing software. Um, but as far as, you know, I think there's an excellent opportunity for black filmmakers today. All they have to do is, like I say, everybody get out there and make a film. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think from a marketing standpoint and going back to what are you going to do with it afterwards, um, you know, the key thing to remember is who's your audience and that you're telling a story and creating a film that is going to speak to that audience. Um, so, you know, as uh, there's, there's a lot of um, audiences for just about any genre of film out there, um, and especially with internet technology, and like Matt said, you know, there are entire films that are now shot on an iPhone, um, because there's HD video technology inherent in, in iPhones now. So there's a lot of opportunity, um, you know, it really just comes down to um, having having that right story or having a story that you want to tell and then the tenacity to follow through with it and, and actually make it happen, which is part of being successful whether you're a filmmaker or whether you're you know, a, a person in business or any field. So it sounds like the basics are important, but you better know what those basics are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> else it, nothing else is yeah, really going to matter. And again, that's where the IFC comes into play. Certainly, you know, certainly. We're, we're going to get those basics established for you. So I wanted to ask you about another contest or event that the IFC puts on. Sure. Uh, it sounds pretty interesting to me. The Fantasy Filmmaker Draft. We in Kansas City are familiar with drafts, yeah. but I don't think when applied to uh, filmmaking. So if you could tell us a little bit more about that. Well, this event actually kicks off for us tomorrow at our meeting um, where we have our first draft. The point of this film, or the point of this uh, contest, this production, is to um, take a story, it's written in five parts, each part written by a different writer. They're going to pass that story along. Each writer can tweak it a little bit, um, and after each writer has a chance to put that together, they're going to analyze it, look for cohesiveness where they can make it a little bit more smooth, um, and then we'll have a, another draft where we'll pick crew, cast, um, uh, the, the first draft tomorrow is going to be for producers, directors, and okay. team captains. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, once they have those teams assembled, we'll have five teams, they're going to take that one part of that and they're going to shoot that part. Oh, wow. Okay? So, and each team is operating individually. Okay. They don't know. The only people know are the, the writers. Mm -hmm. So, at the end of it, um, we're going to have a 45-minute production and it'll be pretty much a surprise to how it turns out to everybody. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by 45 minute production? Well, I don't each, quite each person is, each section is going to be, what, eight minutes? Oh, okay, okay. If I do oh, my okay. math right. Mm -hmm. So it's all sewn together there at the very well, end. Well, so, you know, the whole concept is if you think about a story from beginning to end, typically you have one person that is writing or telling mm -hmm. that story yeah, from okay. beginning to end. You have a, an actress who's maybe your lead actress from beginning to end. Well, what this does, and the whole purpose of this contest um, is to give everybody in the membership a group, a, a chance to work together on a production. Um, well, and, and work with people you don't normally work with. And work with people you don't normally work because with. Because your team people are drafted onto mm -hmm. teams. Great. So all peoples of all level of experience mm -hmm. are yeah. put together. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because you're, you're going to work with people you haven't worked with before. It's mm -hmm. guaranteed. Okay. You know, and you're going to find out whether you want to work with them in the future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is so every of aspect of creating that film from writing to shooting it to, you know, getting your, your cast, your actors in place, um, all the way through editing and creating your finished product, that's done individually by each of these five yeah. teams to carry the story through to conclusion and none of the teams know what the other teams are doing. Wow. So truly the entire story as a whole is a surprise to everybody at the end because they only know their little piece of it. Um, and you know, only, only the, the writers um, who have taken that story and progressed it are the only ones who really know what the entire storyline is. It sounds like the IFC may be a little bit about spontaneity. Uh, at times, uh, at, at least when you look through the lens of the two contests we had talked about, um, it seems like a lot of it uh, is, is on the go. Yes, I, I mean, 
Yeah, but we have like we have another event coming up called Three Five Seven Tight Shorts, okay. where it gives people opportunity to make a three minute, a five minute, or a seven minute film. Okay. Again, we'll have a screening where it's judged. It can be of any genre. So this is, I mean, these are this is well planned in advance. Okay. Um, but the point of any IFC event or contest is hands on instruction and learning. Um, because, you know, we can sit around and talk as much as we want about, you know, what filmmaking is, what it's not, what it needs to be, but you are not going to learn a thing until you get out there on set and pick up something. Sure. You know, move a light stand, you know, sure. pick up a camera, uh, run a slate board, whatever it is. So it's, it, and that's another, one of the things about the IFC is that it's, yes, we'll talk about it, but all these exercises are designed for hands-on learning. You know, I think one of the other things I want to um, add to that is one of the other purposes um, of the IFC is to give these filmmakers, and, and particularly in the case of like the 357 where a filmmaker has put a lot of thought and effort into creating this short film, um, to give them a way to have their film seen by a wider audience because all of our um, contests or, uh, you know, 357 or any of them, um, they're all public events. When we screen mm -hmm. yeah. these, we're screening them typically at either Screenland or one of the other independent theaters in town, and it's open to the public. In fact, we want the public yeah. to come yeah. um, right. and watch these, uh, these films that the, our filmmakers have put together, or filmmakers that are affiliated with us have put together because that gives them a wider audience um, and you know, really, it's more satisfying the more people you have yeah, there, yeah. you know, watching your yeah. film. You don't want it to sit on the shelf at home. You want people to see it. I would think quickly before we have to go. Uh, can you tell us what you need to do to join and where meetings are held? Sure. We hold meetings uh, every Wednesday evening, 7:30 at the Westport Coffee House downstairs in the stage area. Okay. Um, you really don't have to do anything other than just pay thirty dollars a year for your membership. Um, you could be as active or, you know, as much as you want. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a number of benefits. We uh, rent equipment, mm -hmm. get a discount on renting equipment. In fact, only equipment is rented to members. Um, we have a number of businesses around town that give discounts, like discounts on pizza to serve your crew or discount to the Tivoli. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, another benefit, of course, is just the networking. You're going to meet people. Sure. And sure. I think, you know, that. really important is the fact that you know, our membership is comprised of everybody from, from the actual filmmakers to writers to editors to actors and actresses. We also have people who are just film enthusiasts. So everybody and is welcome. They, anybody, yes, anybody is welcome. Absolutely. Well, I'd like to thank you, Matt and Vicki, sure. from the Kansas City Independent Filmmaker Coalition. And we'll see you next time on The Artist Tree.